sometime last month, flashback. Why do they look like that? What are they? What is what? Their appearance is bizarre. A revenge plot against Desmond, Mission 19. What in the world? A very dramatic start. We've succeeded by not failing. We set the bar real high. I see you. I see you staring at Anya from all the way over there. Oh, slow down there, Harry Potter. <laughs> Thank God for that volleyball episode, making me love these lackeys. Damn, Damien's so popular. Damien's so hot right now. But Becky sees right through it. Becky knows who the real man of the show is. <laughs> this is the kid. So it's the Desmond's fault that their pharmaceutical company is toast? George Glooman. Why do you look like that? <laughs> it was you. He looks like someone from the Adams family. That makes us enemies. That's a huge reach, Gloomin. <laughs> Playing soccer. I mean, there are witnesses. I don't think it was that convincing. Tell him, lackey number one. Tell him, lackey number two. <laughs> I like how that's her legacy. Does that earn us an invitation to the birthday party? Or whatever kind of party it is? I mean, they're both pretty similar. They both adore daddy. It's all for daddy's love. It's hilarious that you think his father cares about him or his grades. Yep, Damien is just so happy. He just loves his life so much. Oof, bitter pills. <laughs> this might turn into them being friends, but I feel like for real kids, this was just a terrible move. He's just like a weirdo. Kids don't have time for nuance and empathy. <laughs> Buy you juice with my daddy's money that he got from destroying your company. <laughs> oh, the, sh the constant shading on his face. These kids are out here eating caviar bowls? <laughs> the gloom, it spreads. He's popular now, but for all the wrong reasons. He's exploiting his sympathy power a little bit too much. That was actually a caviar bowl. My middle school lunch was like weird blue chicken and the occasional pizza, which is amazing. <laughs> These kids are so sweet. Bex is fearless. Wow, he's so off tempo. <laughs> this is that was cute though. This feels like just a fanfic. I have never seen elementary school and elementary school kids be this nice and supportive. I feel like he would just get wrecked in real life. They truly are elegant. They are cut above the rest. I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's a little bit too good to be true. I feel like they should all get Stellas for this, if real. I'm so on edge right now. I'm so suspicious. This... Is this real? Is this happening? Is he playing them? Is Gloomin work in the room? Who's playing who here? That is so sweet. No one ever gave me a leaf. <laughs> this is so over the top. <laughs> See you tomorrow, probably. And then he ascended into heaven. Wow, was that really the whole plot? That really happened? No, this is... Uh, no way. No way. Oh, now you 
何が多い人は変わるが私含め研究チームなども丸ごと迎え入れてくれた It's gonna be awkward tomorrow It's a major walk of shame But maybe now we have for friends I want my leaf back And he sends it to heaven again. That's what was so bizarre. It felt like a dream sequence. There's something about Gloomin that's South Park esque. Like a tweet character, but way more sad. But perhaps it was notable just for having Desmond and Anya kind of on the same team. They faced a greater evil in Gloomin that brought them together. Speaking of unrealistic child behavior. That was not my. There it is! That's realistic. From fourth to eighth grade, I was literally the closest person to school living around the corner. I was always the last one there. But no killing today. We get to spend the day with Borf! That's so polite. I mean, in this school, I wouldn't put it past them. On his future, tricycle gang. I mean, in Japanese anime, she's gonna become a middle school gang leader real quick. Mama becomes the wind, mission 19. Bring Borf, too. Bring Borf? You didn't bring Borf? That was incredibly amazing. And she has no idea, this lady. Yours is an unsung hero. She can run faster than either the trolley or the bus. There you go. Parkour! Parkour your! <laughs> Just showing off. <laughs> it's a your parkour musical montage. If you're gonna do parkour though, make sure you do it politely. Self-study, my favorite subject. The timing of this. <laughs> Maybe you should stop climbing the school building. Are these the animals that caused the stampede in one of those early episodes? They are. I love how this came full circle, somehow. It was never explained. We need closure. Whoever is running this farm is not doing it very elegantly. She can hear her thoughts, can't she? Maybe there is no gym today. This is horribly disturbing. School full of kids from rich families who are in danger of kidnapping that you're just sort of waltzed in here to meet her daughter who is just alone, wandering the grounds by herself at the age of four. Whoops. At least you saved that lady's potted plant. <laughs> you did some good today. We can forget the fact that you started another animal stampede. Oh yeah, he's a, a, a doctor. Dr. Lloyd. This is his, like, fear, making him check up on her. How much do you know? Poor you are so worried about being a good mom. I mean, she is. Stop it. Tell her, Lloyd. We haven't really been exploring their, their couple element for a while. It's sort of slow going. I feel like Yor does a lot for Anya. It's just not immediately obvious to her what it is. It's more just like affinity and support and like having a mom at home, spending time with her. Anya clearly adores her. I wonder what Yor could do that would be clear proof to herself that she was doing a good job. Cause she wants so desperately to be useful. I feel like that could be put to good use in a way that's good for her and, and Anya, but not sure what it would be exactly. It's like a mismatching of love languages, I guess. Yor seems to lean really heavily on acts of service as a way of showing or expressing love. But maybe it's because Lloyd does such a great job and Anya's so independent and so smart in her own right that she's not able to, to give as much as she wants. I have relationships where people have expressed to me that they're not doing enough for me. And I'm always really perplexed by that because for me, if I have a, a good relationship with them, that means it's already what it needs to be and what I need it to be by default of 
who the other person is and the joy I get just from the friendship, even if it's just from having someone to talk to or sharing ideas. Part of it is just that you can understand deeply the value others bring to you, but it's harder to see the value you bring to others, even though it's probably pretty similar. But there's part of it that can also stem from a more personal anxiety about not being good enough, having people leave you, not being loved, etc. I'm looking forward to them exploring this in more detail for Yor. I wonder if it connects at all to her childhood being the sole provider for her and Yuri, not really having a strong parental figure, maybe not feeling like she was taken care of enough. I mean, Anya for her might be a model or a symbol or some kind of representation of her own childhood anxieties. Because sometimes when the desire to be loved is too painful to look at, it can take the form of wanting to give love, but there's sometimes a, a kind of request in there or an unmet need. And with your, it's difficult to tell so far to what degree those things are true. She obviously deeply cares about Anya. There's no doubt about that. But how much of it is a desire for someone to care about her? 